That's the power of the canvas of life, people. Oh my gosh, no way. <laughs> 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 how i've been away so long that's mad beef over girl is mad yeah welcome back people and do you know what that first lyric there what do you say how i've been away for so long on that like it feels like we've done it's been a while since we've done a duo episode because why does it feel like that it's because all we've done is record um with like our guests and stuff we haven't obviously we haven't uploaded them yet so i think it's funny because when we, when we say, oh, it's been so long since we've done an episode of just the two of us, people are going to be like, wait, what? You guys haven't recorded? Like, you just, do you know what I mean? But because we know we recorded episodes with other people, it feels like we haven't recorded an episode with just the two of us for a while. It genuinely feels like ages. But the way we're going to re- release it, it's not going to come out looking like that. It's going to look like straight after each other, even though we know what we mean. But We, we know what we mean. We know they what know we mean. what we mean. They, I hope they know what we mean as well. But yeah, no, bro, so, so much has happened since... Bro, oh my goodness, 2020 is finishing me, bro. Right? But you know what? I saw a, um, I don't know if, it, I, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's a poem. I guess maybe I'll say a writing where someone wrote something where they were like, everyone saying 2020 is cancelled, blah, blah, blah. But what if 2020 is the year that it's going to be so uncomfortable for everyone and that we all realise that so much change needs to happen in everything, that, that this is the year where, because everything is so uncomfortable and it's like literally, it's like bad news after bad news, that this is what will kind of like spark a change in the way we run things just in the whole world, not just kind of like, you know, like basically the whole um, Black Lives Matter movement, not just like kind of like racial uh, movement, but also just how we treat people or how we how we treat the world and yes how we treat the world as well yeah, yeah exactly so the think, global movements so that actually that actually makes sense i was like you know what that yeah like maybe this is kind of like what we need to basically move forward and start making a change where, where the world can become a much fairer place and a more interesting like you know what i mean so yeah yeah so i really when i read it i really liked it i thought you know what yeah thoughts out goes out to those who started the year with the new year new me and all that stuff and all them motives for uh, summer 2020 and all them you know yeah i honestly i just because i've been looking at kind of like my old snap memories and stuff like that right last year around this time was basically like a wicked three months where i was traveling just weddings my grad my master's graduation so so many different things were happening in kind of like last summer and it's literally like one of the best summers ever for me personally and then i just thought this year i'm gonna top it even more I'm gonna go to even more places i'm gonna have more things i had I had weddings planned not my wedding but you know other people's weddings which i was gonna attend and that kind of stuff and then literally it's like nothing is happening bruv <laughs> like there's no holidays there's no weddings there's no motives there's nothing and I'm, and I'm looking at my memories from last year and i'm like bro this is so sad it it is what it is, is what yeah, I like to say. It is what it is. I mean, you could look at it from that perspective as well, but then you can also look at it from a positive perspective, as in like, okay, maybe not in terms of an extrovert way, not many things have happened, but in a more of an introvert where you've had a lot of time to work on yourself and in those ways, maybe you can look at That's it from true. an eventful that, that perspective, uh, ways which you might not have had been able to spend on if life was in its normal phase basically so there's a positive way to look at it right right very 100 percent. i think um like you just said yeah um it's a how do you say what am i trying to say i guess you know for basically we've all had to slow down and it's given people a chance to actually like evaluate their life and think about you know what is this what i want to do in life basically everyone's just kind of like being forced to have to think about what they're doing in life and well actually not everyone but most people um and you can basically sit at home you're getting paid if on furlough just to basically exist you know and i think that some people will find passions that they didn't think they had some people will reconnect with passions that they didn't that they stopped doing when they were you know and so maybe it's not it, like you said there's definitely positives that have come out of it but there's definitely been a lot more negatives and that's kind of like the concern you know yeah i agree i agree um yeah they, it's like the negatives just thinking about how many people have died that's obviously the biggest negative and how even like countries like brazil are starting to increase well i mean on, on that on, on that note though like oh i mean so what's happened in terms of like the covid situation since we last spoke about it though like well in the uk anyways like I, I know we're starting to relax the rules on it but at the same time our numbers in terms of cases and death rates is, is probably in a worse position than it was when we went into it and then there's also a lot of other countries around us that are starting to relax their laws against the advice of specialists and then there's obviously a load of craziness going in the states at the moment and actually in many other countries as well at the moment so yeah like it's so much is going on around it 
and a lot of a lot of experts are preparing for a second wave. I think maybe we were looking at it from a while back, and we kind of expected this to happen. But once things started to look good, we're probably if you were to look at it in in some way, it's like we're in the eye of the storm at the moment. So we have passed a tough phase when like hospitals were overrun, and you know people could see the illnesses, and now we're at this phase now where you know people are starting to lose that fear. They are seeing less and less of the effects of COVID, and they're like, okay, we're good now. Life's starting to come back to normal. Football's coming back to normal. Everything's coming back to normal. Places starting to open up. So we're like, yeah, we're good. We're good. Who knows what what's to come in terms? Because like I said, we're we're always talking about a second wave, and we don't know how bad it can be. About the second wave is that for me personally, I think they're gonna blame. They're gonna try and blame people who've been protesting for like the Black Lives Matters. I think they're gonna be like they're gonna use their images as the reason why the second wave happened. Even though you'll see loads of people like before people are going to the beaches, and there's images of loads of people just going to the beach. But I think it's gonna be a case they're gonna try and it's gonna be a case where they might try and blame it on black people and other people and people who are basically protesting alongside with them and that's gonna be and that might take away the whole black lives matter situation because it's gonna turn into a negative and it's like because i saw a video where what's her name pretty patel the i don't know who's it home office pretty i don't i don't i don't actually know what her role is i forgot what her role is but yeah where she was basically like telling people if you're thinking about protesting well don't and it's like yeah but you're telling people not to do a lot of things and people have been doing it so don't try and twist it and blame these people for something do you know what i know so that's what i'm worried about that in the future when if there is a second wave they're gonna blame it on on black people and, and other people who've been protesting do you know on that on that topic though like I, I saw someone saying this is ridiculous there's so many other better ways to pro like to protest this issue other than actually going out and protesting i'm i'm like with something as serious as this how what other options do people have how else do you protest without getting the government's acknowledgement but it shows you the res- the resist the resilience of people that they're, they're literally putting their health at risk because this is a serious matter and it's not i think a lot of people are downplaying the effects of how this is affecting people so when you think about how people are willing to go out in public even though some of them will probably have like health conditions where they're not really supposed to be mixing with people but they're trying to show the support for and basically they're saying the situation can't run anymore we need to there's things need to change we can't go on basically a, a, like with one basically making a whole race based not a second like second class second class citizens and not allowing them to basically have the same privilege that one group does and things just need to change and these people are basically putting their lives on the line like I'm saying so yeah it definitely shows it shows just how how much of a big issue this is when not even i, I like obviously like there's taglines like covid is a, a a plague that's been around for, for a couple of months now but racism has been some a plague that's been around for decades centuries whatever you want to however you want to tagline that so yeah so that i i think even if even if like even if people try and blame those uh people protesting f- uh, for the black lives matters movement i mean that we've all seen pictures of people getting on the beach people at the park so nah no i'm not having none of that <laughs> basically so we're, we're talking about the fact that people are getting a lot more relaxed well at the same time like places r- restaurants shops and stuff are reopening unfortunately for me the barbers haven't opened just yet but it's okay it's calm my hair's looking good my hair's looking long it's calm but yeah no like have you heard about mcdonald's reopening and there's been like long queues and people legit queuing up for hours I d- do you know what's funny i didn't even know mcdonald's was open i knew KFC you know- was open. no i didn't know i i haven't seen it anywhere actually i know it's no that's a lie i saw it happening in london um and i just thought because i saw that um obviously like kfc nando's and a lot of other places had started to open i wasn't really sure much about mcdonald's i mean i don't really eat at mcdonald's um yeah but um i don't really know about them so i only know about it because of the memes pages like which have been talking about people bragging about and putting it on their stories and their posts about how they got food from mcdonald's basically that's why do you reckon mcdonald's might have made or at least come close to what the in terms of cash sum of what they would have lost in previous months having not been opened nah nah. Nah. think about how long they've been closed for they've been they're not going to make it in like in terms of demand though they're going to get very high demand yeah they already have they already have but it's not going to be a case of oh um they're going to make three months worth of profits in like uh, even a week or two. Come on. Like, Let me tell you this though. Can you imagine how much pee these guys have here when they can comfortably be shot for that long? Yeah, I mean, that's a, a lot of companies. Some of the bigger companies are literally like, I remember, I think Heathrow Airport said that they had like a billion pounds in cash reserves, which, so that means they could, comf- they, would, they would be comfortable for at least another year without any, and I was like, damn, like, that's, actually, that's, that's mad. Whereas obviously some people literally a week of no, of no, of no business and they're probably on the brinks of having to shut down question for you do you think that 
com- big companies like that should be helping out small companies if they can comfortably sit on their backside for that long without a worry and then like you mentioned there's companies who are stressed about whether if they could survive another week do you think that companies should help them out or like is it actually no when i ask that question i'm already thinking like that's kind of like putting in the same light as like when we used to talk about celebs and like it's like if you're asking for big companies to help out small companies you're it's like asking in a similar manner asking celebs with a lot of money to help out like they have to do they have yeah, like they don't yeah. have to do that you also have to think about it it's competition if say for example let's, let's look at it in, in like a food a food um using food right so let, let's say mcdonald's which is like the big big company say mcdonald's say a lot of small businesses small um, restaurants close right and McDonald's, mcdonald's will basically have less competition so why so it wouldn't be in their interest to to build them out because do you know what i mean like it's whereas if you look at it in a human like trying to be like help each other out then it's a case of people are relying on those businesses to feed their families and and all sorts and do you do you have a moral obligation to help others so you could look at it too in two different ways um look at it in a business way and be like nah like this could basically drive my profit even more when all these businesses shut down but is that the right thing to do i want to see kfc helping out pfc peck and fried chicken and all the other brands peck like that fried chicken. It's, not peck and it's, it's perfect fried chicken and there's other ones as well though there's loads of them have you not seen them not yeah, just no, no, not just there's, pfc, there's CFC there. there's yeah the... kfc needs to help them okay <laughs> So yeah, a load of places are preparing to reopen and whilst that's happening, like other institutions like for example Cambridge, they all are the first known uni to in the UK to move all their lectures to online uh, webinars all the way up to summer 2021. Do you think that they can still be allowed to charge the full tuition fees if people, if people aren't going to be there and it's all online? Do you think online online courses sh- should be charged the same as in person? No. I don't think they should be for the matter of the fact that being in person means you can you have so much more f- flexibility to learn in terms of the resources and the elements that you can use to to get a better education whereas if it's in a webinar I think the only justification you can use in terms of for having a similar tuition fee is the fact that of the person who's teaching so you could or Cambridge could argue the fact that whoever's teaching and the resources they have will be a lot more elite or of a higher quality in order to charge what they charge so yeah it depends on which way you look at it everyone charges the same it, it, it doesn't matter which uni you go to in england i know it differs in america um and maybe some other countries but here every uni has to charge the same price so i think i, I personally think that they should just or if or if unis are going to do that next year then they should just cut it at least half or or if it's nine thousand, at least just charge people at maybe like three thousand a year. Go back to what it was before, um, as opposed to charging nine thousand for when you can't even go to the the uni and you're learning from home. So, yeah, like, like, can you imagine though? Like, if okay, you just got into Cambridge, right, and then you can't even go there, you can't even be there. Well, maybe you can, but you can't even turn up for the lectures, like, and you can't even go to any what do you call it, fresh fair or nothing. And yeah, so you get you, you lose that student experience. Yeah, that's that is legit yeah. peak. That sucks, in my opinion. I'd hate to go to going to uni at this time. I obviously I I'm mean, I'm I'm at uni, but obviously it's not undergrad. Yeah, no, nah, that undergrad that, experience, man, is something. Yeah, that was... that's actually that's gonna be weird for me actually because if if my uni does that and they close well not close but they basically say they're going to have all teaching online so people don't have to be there there'll literally be no one on campus so it'll just be the people those of us doing research so ca- the campus will just be this massive place where there's not many n- not many students and it's just hey but at least i'll get free parking right for- <laughs> <laughs> the, the city you're in at the moment is it, is it like is it a student city yeah yeah very much so so, so- obviously two- yeah, so if that was to happen, like, it will make a massive difference. Because I remember when we used to study in Cardiff, like, do you know what I mean? You could tell when students were there and weren't there. Yeah, I mean, I've just I've just come back here and it just feels different. There's not many people. There's, it's really quiet. It's, it's quite a vibrant city usually, but it's just, it's just a different energy now. And like, when you're around the student areas, it's just, there's no one here. It's just normal people who are just here. So I guess it'll be a weird, if that's what happens, obviously for the next year, it'll be a weird, weird year. But I think it'll be weird. Like, could you imagine doing your undergrad, right? From your house? Oh my word. Do you know, you know, they say like, 
uni's supposed to be the best year best time of your life or something i mean obviously like i had a great like do you know what i mean i don't think it should be that should be the case like people I who do you know what i mean like uni doesn't have to be the best time of your life you can easily multiply that and have an even better time afterwards which is what we're doing except for 2020 obviously for the obvious reasons but yeah no i, I think it, it is still an elite time that i had like i had such a great time undergrad and postgrad even like and so yeah not for real like genuinely for students to have to sit through at home all of that and miss out on all of that damn i genuinely do feel sorry for them man there's literally nothing there's if it, there's no you can't join any clubs and societies you can't you can't even go to or like go to lectures you can't go on nights out you can't go on any balls any like formal events any anything possibly. just the development and social skills everything oh my word like yeah you are but well, i can i can sit here and tell you about all the developments that i'm in that because i like to look at things from a like a personal development spectrum as well and the the changes that I made from my first year right to the end, like for me, just from my own sight has been mega. And for someone to miss out on something like that, I feel, yeah, do you know what I mean? It's it's pretty, it sucks. But hey, they'll, they'll save money though. That's a positive. Would they though? Yeah. yeah, because they don't have to pay. Oh, you mean like an excess to, amount? Okay, yeah, yeah, fair. You don't have to pay for another place to live. You don't have to pay for transport. You don't, all that kind of stuff. So you might save a bit of money to be fair. and Or, or you'd be in less debt than some of us are. That could be a positive. Yeah, but if we're if we're tipping on a way scale, I I still peak for them. <laughs> no, I, I definitely would rather go to uni. Um, <laughs> I'd still pay all that pee just to to keep all the experiences that we had. Like, do you know what I mean? Oh well, it is what it is. Again, yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, no. So that that's what is mostly most of what's been happening around that COVID situation, lockdown situation. And you actually did talk. Uh, you mentioned it just briefly, uh, not too long ago, about the fact that some countries are now going through their rough patches like for example Brazil or just that whole su- uh, South- Southern American continent as well as patches in Asia such as India are now battling through it so yeah some countries going through the tough moments and others coming out of it potentially and others like ours the UK could uh, be heading into a, a second wave did you see what the president of Brazil said about because he was he was starting to lift lockdown even though they're still their case oh still my increasing. god yeah say it um, out say it out he he was like death is everyone's destiny or something like that and i was like whoa that is dark he just thought yeah people are gonna die but i we need to fix our economy so bro if boris johnson was to come out and say that what would what would you what would you think i don't even know what i i wouldn't be surprised though i mean trump said something similar when he was like vaccine or no vaccine actually do you know what boris johnson did say something similar to that. he goes a lot of people will die many of you people in your family will die so it is a, but actually no 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 it still doesn't come close to what this brazilian yeah that was mad, that was mad. That was oh my god man that is mental apparently he is like very stubborn yeah um, he's starting to leave the who even, because they're they're unhappy with the fact that brazil are starting to lift lockdowns even though people are still dying i don't know what to say about this like we've obviously got uh, people who've co- got into contact with us from brazil have been telling us about how hectic it is over there at the moment and same with same with india there was um someone told us all the different things that they're going through right now which is just immense it's just crazy you know and the craziness doesn't stop there so we've also talked about how so 2020 man like as in like the fact that so I, I, obviously people are making it into memes you know you could genuinely make the events that have happened just this year or just these six months alone into an actual like epic trailer and someone actually like, made a, it in, in 10 15 20 years right i'm expecting a film 10 to, 15 years you think it's gonna take that long bro i think legit next year no, no, not even that. Like, it'll probably take like a couple of years someone will make 2020 you know that from 20, 2012 there'll be a 2020 with i don't know hopefully like john boyega gets to play the leading role and he gets loads of money because he's a star well, well he's already fun. got loads of money but <laughs> you know what i mean i know what you mean <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's like, it's just been a crazy, it feels like we've had every disaster in like six months and it's not, and it's not even stopping. There's still crazy things going to be happening. And it's, now they're talking about hurricanes and I'm thinking, boy, like. Oh <laughs> yeah. The US are entering into hurricane season. Oh, mental. And then, so yeah, as, as the memes are saying, we're now into season six of 2020 and already, and it just all the protest events have happened around just as died um and as well as around that as well russia have also gone into a state of emergency they had an oil spill which went into um, a lot of their water reserves and yeah, so yeah something like twenty thousand liters of oil or something like that which is cr- what 
and oh, also right. an Can't asteroid wait. is passing by today i think which is the size of the empire state building everyone's just like oh it might as well just hit us at this point <laughs> it might just as well finish just hit off. us just finishes off oh man end the season here bro this is enough <laughs> um so that's that but and and then also of course then we we've stumped we've uh, talked about this in our previous episode in episode ten about the protests as well and just so much happening around that we've also talked we've already talked about what's happened and why it's happening in terms of the protests but then around it there's also been what anonymous coming in coming back um, we've seen the Amish in support of the protests we've seen witch oh and the witches out. the witch big up don't forget the witches big up the witches yeah yeah can't forget the witches man so <laughs> wow oh. it actually is a movie like it's not even a meme for me anymore it's legit a movie do you know what, do you know what it's like you know when um, in Endgame when the whole gang oh up? Right, and like this is what it's like. For a boom, anonymous is here to join the fight. Boom, the Amish are here to join the fight. Boom, the witches are here to join the fight. Like, like now we're we're really going to attack racism in this because we, white supremacy is basically like Thanos and the whole gang. There was Batman as well. Oh yeah, Batman pulled up to it as well. Jeez, the whole everyone everyone pull up pulling up to fight racism and white supremacy. We love to see it. We do indeed. What's this thing about Virgil? Ah. Uh, Virgil Blow. So basically, right? So Virgil Blow, for those of you who don't know, is the director of Off White, which is I think is part is still part of Louis Vuitton, right? So he's a designer. He's like the yeah, he's a CEO of uh, Off White. They sell very expensive designer wear, obviously. So basically, when people are donating to the uh, Minnesota public bailout fund, 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 and um, people are basically challenging each other. It was basically, it basically turned into like a challenge thing. You know where how everyone's doing like the Instagram challenge. Like if I tag you in this, you have to do this, blah, blah, blah. So people are basically donating $50 to um, basically to the fund. And obviously he decided to match that 50 pounds, which to be fair is fair enough. But then people were like, hold up a second. You're worth $4 million. You're the CEO of Off-White and all you offered was $50. And someone was like, if you look on Off-White, right? $50 wouldn't even get you socks on from like any of his like anything that he's designed so that it wouldn't even get you it would couldn't you couldn't buy anything off on the on their website with fifty dollars so they were literally like this man couldn't even donate the price of socks like like so someone said all he had to do was donate a pair of socks to um <laughs> to, to, and that would have been a much more valuable uh donation to the uh, to the fund and i was in like that so basically people were basically calling him stingy and um and it's funny apparently i heard that he actually did silently donate 20 and that's what that's so my, on my when I first saw it, I thought, you know what? First of all, okay, fair enough. Even if he's worth, mil- he's a millionaire and he's worth loads of money or whatever. If that's what he wants to give, no one. First of all, he doesn't have to give. Like, it's his money. He could, he could have just not given anything. And if he wanted to match for fifty dollars, fair enough. At um, least he's given enough, something, in my opinion. Exactly. And if everyone gave fifty dollars, that's a lot of money. It doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? But the fact that I just found it funny because that's, that the jokes about it were funny because they're like, damn, he. All he had to do was all he had to do was donate a pair of socks, and then he, that, that so that was kind of funny, and it was just and I was like, you know, what, what what if maybe he was just doing it for the social media, and actually he had donated more, you know? People don't know that, and I think and that brings it back to remember our previous episode where we talked about basically trying to force people like look at people's wallets and basically tell them how much money they should give. Like if someone wants to give money, even if he all he, did, all he gave was one dollar, at the end of the day, it's still his money. He can do whatever the hell he wants with it. So we we can't judge people for giving. Them. I for me personally, I didn't I don't think he's done anything wrong because it's his money and he can do whatever the hell he wants with it i just find the whole thing funny because i like the memes and the jokes about it were funny and now people have basically used his his name to mean 50 so i saw this thing where it's like you and your girlfriend gotta go 50 um gotta go virgil virgil in a relationship and i thought you guys are so stupid like <laughs> we always find a way to uh, to make ourselves uh, laugh out of weird situations and we always find a joke in something but no, I, th- I think there is something that has to be like as in like in the fact that an interesting question comes out of it as in like we put a lot of pressure on celebs to be outstanding role models but the, the fact is we, we can be very judgmental in the sense that like for example if 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 someone comes out and like for example marcus rashford right donating like all those all that food and whatnot to to school kids which has been denied by the government and so on like people you, you'll see people commenting and saying like oh like 
like, why can't you do this silently and this and that? Always asking for more. Whereas if he was to do it silently, like people would be like, oh, why can't footballers be better role models and this and that? Or like, for example, if like if a celeb was to just silently donate, there'll be people like, oh, why doesn't, let's say, Bill Gates donate more and whatnot? Yeah, if he was to come out and send a video of people, oh, and if Bill Gates was to come out and send a video and be like, here's a video evidence of me giving this amount of money to this charity and so on, people would be like, oh, he's only doing it for the clout or because he why does he have to record himself so like what does people want yeah i i agree and i I think that's why in this world you just have to do what you think is right by you and you can't just because no matter what you do someone's going to find a reason to hate and people are going to look at it at a different angle so if you know what you're doing is right and people like your family and your friends know that you do the right thing that's what matters what strangers on the internet what strangers on the internet think about you is not your concern you shouldn't give it don't give a damn about what they're saying because if you know you're doing you're doing good things and you're doing good deeds who cares what jerry from so and so things about or oh, someone who has no who doesn't even have a profile picture or has a cartoon as a profile picture is basically do you know what I mean like, like who gives a damn like about what they what, what they think I think the quote you can't please everyone has never been so true like when it comes to the internet anyways you definitely can't please everyone so you just have to do what you, have to do what you think is right yeah it is what it is man it is what it is <laughs> I hope that's a quote for this episode yeah. it is what it is so that's the vertical we should, called, we should have called this episode it is what it is the COVID special <laughs> but yeah no, obviously like there's so much media interest and and, and um, obviously for the right reasons a lot of coverage coming out of the the protests in the in the, the, the last couple of the last week even in the meantime don't you <sighs> One thing that's resurfaced is the Madeleine McCann story. Isn't that a bit suspect? What do you reckon, bro? It just seems like I mean I I don't know. Um, I'm not at the end of the day. It's, it is someone's life, so I'm not gonna say oh they're they're using it blah blah blah. What was the report? So they apparently basically did it. All they said right was that they found a sus- there's a suspect in Germany or something like that. But then they were like they think they think that she's dead. And I'm like okay, so I don't even know what like what they expect. What what did they want from? What did they want us to do? Is what I want to know. Do you know what I mean? What 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 do you want us to do about this situation? I don't know, man. I don't know. For me, I'm just suspicious because because obviously I saw I saw two Twitter like they're basically trying to drown out by basically drown out the Black Lives Matter um story and basically put find other things to keep people engaged and interested so that they forget about Black Lives Matter and basically move on away from it. And yeah, do you me, know since know. this whole incident, well actually even way before that, but this incident has really put light into the fact that the media are just so so manipulative. I mean, obviously we already knew that beforehand, but it's just so they're in plain sight to see it now come on think about it. i mean like if you see the newspapers right like obviously still everybody online knows about uh, just how important and just how big this movement is at the moment but like the daily mail and all of those had the madeline mccann story at the front and center of the whole of the front paper it's just like and the thing is really if you think about it right the madeline so what they had in the madeline mccann it's not even that interesting it's basically oh there's a new suspect but it's like okay so is that made that's not it's not it's not even major news but they make they're trying to make something that's not even a big deal major news like if they don't actually have any solid concrete evidence of something which they could be like okay so we found out this it's just basically oh yeah let's try and put this push this story out there and it's just a waste of everyone's time to be honest with you do you think that case will ever be resolved um hmm, interesting question uh no i don't think so but i think well no yes in the sense that where i think eventually people realize that there's nothing that can be done but no in the sense that they'll never be will never truly know what actually happened if that makes sense so I always, there'll be a time where it'll literally be like you know what like if she, okay let's say maybe like 70 years 80 years and they're like okay yeah so she would have been this age she's probably dead by now like at least <laughs> like so it is what it is so Sort of thing it is but, it is kind of it is peak though like, i mean surely by this if she was if she was alive and she would have been at, at, a, at an age where she'd be able to identify and be like yo that's me and then who knows what would have happened after i don't know i mean or maybe she could be abdu- oh, i don't know it, it's a it's a peak because at the end of the day at the time of it happening it was a young girl and you know sh- yeah it, it, it's sad it's a sad case very strange case as well it genuinely is like the media coverage it had like it was right at the front of of the media's attention for so long and it still is in a sense and like yeah with that much media attention and the fact that they haven't really gotten anywhere with the case it's very strange I could have felt disappear like that it's mental the whole thing is quite fishy to me it is massively fishy I don't think they'll ever resolve that case to be honest I don't know to bring it back to talking about kind of like the media and it, it also shows you the power of people how we as people are very powerful because if you look at 
all the pet- like sometimes I sometimes I get disheartened because I think all these petitions and all these things don't work. And then basically recently I've I've we realized that a lot of these things are starting to work where we're getting cases being reopened. For example, uh, Belly Muj- I, I'm not, I can't remember her last name. I don't want to I don't want to get it wrong. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it. But the the lady who someone spat on her and then she died from COVID. But so there was petitions to basically get justice for her and now the case has been reopened and we've seen a lot of stuff like that happening out in America where because of the pressure so for example the George Floyd case where because of the pressure of of the petitions and all of that the the police officer his case has been raised from a second from a third degree murder to a second degree murder and now the other three officers have also been charged with aiding and abetting and all of this is because people were signing petitions and were demanding justice and for me that kind of shows you that we as people are can be powerful and if we all put work together we can actually get a lot of things done and we can show like it's not do you know what i mean like it's the power it's the power the power of all of us bro i'm right there with you on that because i just like you just like you always think what does a petition actually do and stuff like that but this whole incident has definitely shown the fact that it does make a difference and when you can get enough because for example if no one if no one raised their voice, if no petitions were signed, etc., then nothing like this whole case would be ignored. It's so blatant, right? So yeah, definitely, definitely. And it inspired me because of that. I'm now I, literally every petition I see, I'm reading through the case, seeing what I think, and I'm signing it. And I'm like, damn, like, like we can actually make a difference, and we can actually get justice, and we can make um, a difference in people's lives. So we can't just sit back and not let anything happen. So yeah, like big power to the people. I'm yeah, I'm just. Let's get it. Good, good, good. Now that is a positive. And also talking about media, shall we say, or manipulation in a sense. Did you hear about did you hear about Carly Jenner apparently not being a billionaire? And apparently she faked a load of like documents. So she's not. Yeah, she's still at the end of the day, you can't really be like she she's still a multi-millionaire. Do you know what I mean? Like you can't really yeah, do you know what I mean? And I think that's what some <laughs> people are like, are like, oh yeah, like, blah blah blah. But I'm thinking, mate, she's, they still said she's worth like nine, like she's still worth almost a billion, even if she's not worth a billion. That is still a lot of money. I saw bare people like celebrating it, and I'm just like, mate, you know she's still got bags, <laughs> like there's nothing to why would you even say I, I don't know and do you know actually yeah, like, people like to celebrate the downfall of people but anyways that's but still people are haters man but yeah the funny thing is right so i think she even though all of this is happening she's she still topped the highest earning um celebrities even though she's not so that means in the last so and so she has earned the most money still so it's kind of like mate how you like, there's actually nothing to hate on her right like, mate if i if, if, if she could give me 10 percent of her riches i'll be gassed <laughs> so, like, like even 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 five, I'd even take five percent, bro. Like, so do that. So or oh, even one percent, like and I'm good with it's fine. Yeah, even one percent is still like a million pounds or a million, you know, dollars or almost. Yeah, a million dollars, which is so. And I saw a funny meme where like, they're like, damn, Kylie even photoshopping her tax records. I'm dead. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> Oh, that 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 was funny enough to make me cough. How have you, have you been enjoying um football? Have you been watching the Bundesliga? Exactly. Have you seen the um the meme where it was like, this is all of us when the English Premier League comes back, where we're gonna be like, I don't want to play with you anymore. Like basically, we don't want to watch. Yeah, we don't want to watch the Bundesliga anymore because now our we've we've got better something to watch now. So I'm very excited actually. And do you know what? Do you know when in like a couple of episodes back when we were like, I mean, we watched the first Bundesliga game without without any fans, and we're just like, well, I, I said anyways. Like after like literally a couple of minutes, I was kind of bored, and I was like, "Uh, this is dead." But I've gotten used to it, and obviously now they're adding in the fan, the crowd noises as well, and it's just like, "All right, cool, fine, I guess I can deal with it." But like, even though I'm a null and voider, and I would hate to see Liverpool win the league, but I guess it's gonna happen now. Whatever, just deal with it. But I was genuinely very, very, very gassed to see or hear the news that the Premier League was coming back, and I'm even now I'm just still buzzing. I can't wait for it to come back. And the fact that every game's gonna be on TV as well is like, so we're gonna get to watch so many games because everything is being everything is gonna be streamed. All all, like, all 96 games, I think. Even brother, even you're gonna catch me Brighton versus Norwich. I'm there, fam. Bro, even, <laughs> even if Liverpool, even though Liverpool are gonna win the league. Like they're gonna have to do it without any crowds and without the fans. So that's a small victory, I, think, I guess. They weren't. They won it in the worst year ever. So exactly. So I guess I'll take that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, now I'm excited. And like, obviously, sports are coming back slowly. Like basically, like we said before, like organizations are finding a trick which is working. And in the sense that basically, like for example, the Premier League is doing, they'll do different rounds of tests. So for example, in the first round, like they'll do they'll test 
everyone involved. And then if those who test positive for the virus will be excluded, so they're not allowed to take part for until they've isolated. And then they'll do another round of tests and then basically literally filtering out as many positive tests as possible to the point that, okay, look, this is good enough. Let's start. So I think that that's, and that's what a lot of other organizations and sports are doing now, such as the UFC, tennis, they're looking to bring back the US Opens as well as the French Opens. So yeah, so this is the case. Like everyone's got to adapt and that's what every industry is doing. And this is basically, like we said before, sports is a showcase of what's happening around the world. So if sports can do it, then yeah, I guess so can many other. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, it's not you might not do you might not agree right i am excited for sports to come back but at the same time i'm also like nothing ever seems not nothing at the moment seems that important just because of what's going on and like for me it's kind of like just even during the pandemic police are still finding ways to kill black people even and for me it's just kind of like all these little things don't actually matter and when people are dying who, who cares about tennis or who cares about football do you know what i mean maybe it's just me but that's how i that, that's literally how i've been feeling and i know what you mean yeah things, things don't aren't as enjoyable as they were because it's kind of like it's just things are just like yeah like yeah i hear that i hear that at the same time there are people who might need a sense of escapism for example kids or whatever i, I don't know it's uh yeah i definitely hear you i definitely hear you but as at the same time as all well, other areas of life has to keep on grinding keep on moving so from a yeah from a personal perspective 100 i totally see what you mean as in like yeah but yeah that's not to say other places and and again you know it, like we saw with the Borussia Dortmund players and sorry even many other teams as well just kneeling like it is a good platform as well to bring and raise awareness to the issues that we're talking about no, yeah, yeah you are right you're right and I think hopefully the fact that people love watching po- football and they see that football football teams and footballers care about this issue maybe they might realise that this is actually a bigger issue so hopefully yeah you're right and talking about kneeling did you see NFL apologising for their previous views where they would say or they were trying to ban players kneeling during the national anthem and now they've apologized for that oh i haven't actually seen the apology but yeah no they, they yeah they they apologized oh, okay i'll yeah. have to check they, that they out. literally oh. they said that they were wrong for doing that that's you know what you can't you can't blame someone for holding themselves up and saying you know what we were wrong in this situation um but we have to look at it two sides like do you think is it a genuine right, apology? Yeah, it also could be the fact that right now everyone realized everyone is kind of like yeah and they're basically trying to save face but maybe sometimes we should try and look at the good in people and be like you know what mate they've realized that they're wrong and they're trying to do better do you know what i try to and i want to but then if there's anything that this experience has taught me is never to take anything at face value for example the incidences with the police where they're kneeling down and then literally a couple of minutes later they're up again shooting tear gas people and, and rubber bullets and they're just like okay cool yeah, man, no, that, know, that's, right. i'm not falling right. for anything anymore so it's one of them ones you're right you're actually very right and i think um i actually tweeted that the other day where i was like all like all these institutions all these companies all these corporations who are basically putting out all these pointless statements unless you make real change and you set outline of how you like an outline of how you're going to make a change all these statements of how we um, we 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 stand with black people we're blah 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 it's all nonsense it's just bs if you're not going to change you can't just put a tweet out and that's it like now you have to you have to actually do something and i think that day so i can't remember what day it was but there was that one a few days ago where literally people would be like a uni for maybe a like even like maybe like oxford or cambridge or um different different companies even the nfl they all were tweeting oh yeah we stand with black people and black lives do matter and blah 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 and then people will be like yeah but you did that you didn't do this when so many people have receipts so, yeah so many people were like yeah so many people were getting like yeah and i think now people like, words don't mean shit anymore now you need to basically be like okay we've messed up in the past here is what we're gonna we do need, moving forward this is how we're gonna yeah we have a we are gonna now work hard to make sure that this place is inclusive of everyone and everyone feels and you know what well. the internet never forgets that's it that's one thing like we've remember like we've learned is that the internet does not forget so people will know and remember the fact that this company for example let's say sky sports yeah they put out a message saying to a, a few like a, yesterday or today about how they stand with black people with what's happening right now and and the people literally everyone's coming up with the video receipt of uh, when Gary Neville was speaking up and, and do you remember, have you seen that and, and then the producers were uh, saying to the presenter to to say oh no this is not the, the views of Sky Sports and he was like uh, really literally is that literally something you have to state on live TV it was and I think it almost ruined the, like, the effectiveness of that moment and I think when I saw when I saw the tweet I was like he's he has messed up here um, because he was basically like bro someone just gave a passionate speech about how things need to be fixed and blah 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 and then you turn around and you're like 
yeah, these are the views of Gary and it's not the views of the Thai sports. And like, bro, in like, you know, in stuff like this here, you're, you're basically on the wrong side of history. When you do yeah, it's like embarrassing, like, bro. Like, when, you come, when, you, when you look down many years time, like, it's funny because when you, to bring it back, right, to kind of like how people are like, oh, how can people do that to the Nazis? And, um, or how could, you know, how can, no, how could people allow the Nazis to do that to the Jews and all that kind of stuff? And that's basically exactly the same thing we're doing now by keeping silent and just letting things happen. And when you keep silent and let things happen, in like 50 years time, when students, students are studying kind of like what's been happening around these times, they're going to think, rah, so you lot allowed black people to be treated like that. And it's going to be like, you no know, people are going to be like wondering how the hell did we, like did all these crazy things happen? Didn't any, say anything. And then we're literally going to look back and be like, we didn't do anywhere. We didn't say anything. We didn't do anything. And we basically let things happen. And so by doing that, you're going to be on the wrong side of history because you people are going to look at you in like many years time, like, wait, so you guys sat back and let these things happen to people and it's the same thing with what's happening in places like Yemen and Syria and do you know what I mean like we just sat back and letting these things happen and in 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 the future like your kids and your grandkids are going to be like wait so you guys actually let all these things happen and didn't say anything mate if there is a future bloody hell even with things like the uh, even with things like global with the global warming as well and all of that stuff and you'd be like did the world really let all of these things happen like did no one really care about anything back in the days or what but we're, it's, it's, we're literally stuck in such small and irrelevant bubbles that we're stuck in this bubble where we don't like things are happening um like if i just mentioned about what like, for example what's happening to muslims in china the um the slave like africans being sl- being made slaves in libya and obviously what's happening like i said in syria and yemen and and all these different places and we just sat back and we're just not doing anything we're not allowed and it's we're just we're basically complying with what's happening and basically we all suck <laughs> because we're not doing anything but as you said before though jez 2020 it seems like the time where a lot of these matters are being addressed or at least where i yeah, we're raising our vocal privileges I, I guess so on a number of topics so like kez mentioned it in episode 10 as well about how people so many people turned up for the marches for global warming and so on was like with greta before this whole covid stuff happened and of course now with all the protests going on across the world regarding the Black Lives Matter movements. Also, as many people are trying to get out awareness for what's happening in China as well. So yeah, this is it, man. Like we said it in the previous episode, like this is the time. We've never had a better opportunity to make good and to make definitely. positive changes. Like, we all need to, re- like our voices definitely need to be raised now where we, I think the fact that we've realized that, you know what, when we all come together and we all say no means no, we can't have this anymore. This can't run anymore. We can make change and i think we now need to start not letting things happen we not like we basically we need to just start taking on all these all these problems and just like tackle everything racial inequality global warming misogyny um just how everything like everything just needs to be tackled and we could we can't just sit back and let things continue to happen we we now we, we know we have we have we have power in our voices and when we come together as one we can get things done there we have it then so looking at 2020 in a positive manner yep everything's going to shit every month every day but it's happening so that we can make a difference and talk about positivity joe rogan jace got a dub for all for all podcasters he's got his podcast exclusively on spotify and this is big because like he is pretty much i think the main figure when it comes to podcasts what do you think about this like so yeah this basically changes the game because it just people are going to be like whoa so there's money in podcasts like that there's because a hundred million dollar deal just to be exclusive to spotify and i think spotify are trying to be kind of like the main platform for for um for podcasts so that's why they're putting so obviously by doing that they basically took you know what let's take the biggest podcast in the world and make it exclusive to, to us so people and have now to every spotify. podcast can be trying to aim in for that same deal exactly which means then everyone's going to want to go to spotify to be exclusive to spotify and then spotify are basically going to win so it's a smart deal and yeah now there's yeah like that big up to joe rogan right like, i think everyone everyone says that and like, i just wanted to add to it like that like he does have such eye-opening and, and just interesting podcast episodes soldiers in like you've just got to really respect the research that he puts in every episode like when you listen to it and the he has such a variation with the guests that he has but every time every episode he does like you're, just, you're, you're listening in and you're just like okay like he talks like he knows what he's on about with every guest and every topic and I'm like that just goes down to his research basically he'd be a great PhD student <laughs> and well yeah I mean he's, he's getting what's it called getting the benefits of it now so you know 
And on that dub, I guess we should wrap up, Jace. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it's um, been a while since we've done this, but like, what's our recommendations? <laughs> what is, um, what's our recommendations for the week? I can't lie. The only thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recommend again is basically anything to do with learning about the black experience. So watch things like 13th, watch the Khalif Browder story on Netflix. Um, read Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People about about um, race, natives by color. Yeah, I, I'm not, that's literally the kind of things I'm recommending. How about you, Rahi? My recommendations would be to, if you see any petitions about, give it give it the acknowledgement that it deserves, retweet, and of course, sign it yourself. That would be my recommendations for this week. Anything from an entertainment manner? This is not the time for entertainment. This is the time for us all to learn and use our voices. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I like I feel like a, like a parent in it. Like no more TV, no more. No more yeah, it's time for us to stop. Being, it's time for us to stop getting distracted. It's time for us to. Uh, <laughs> let's let's make the world a better place okay <laughs> okay then all right then i guess then no uh no anything then just uh read books guys read books man read books guys <laughs> are we wrapping up on that then yeah our socials what are our socials again come on mate nah come on you did it. episode 10 you smashed it you got it come on no i don't know i got it great don't worry and i got it yeah so it's uh so on instagram is canvas dot of dot life underscore twitter canvas of life one facebook canvas of life and our website canvas hyphen no canvas hyphen of hyphen life dot com and until now take care stay safe and stay alert it's been a pleasure guys till next time bye-bye